Can you all hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, this is the Cossack stamp mill. It came out of uh, Glen, New Mexico, which is about 40 miles west of Albuquerque, in, um, brought it over in 1989. The stamp mill itself and the surrounding buildings, the town and everything went up about 1914. We brought it over in 1989 to Goldfield, which is down the road, and it was reassembled here a little after 1998. Last fall, we actually got this end of it to run. So uh, basically, we start with the crusher over here. So this this uh, tool essentially takes these uh, boulders, which would have come out of the mine, and break them into smaller pieces so that they can take into the mill and then crushed into a very fine powder. That fine powder then was chemically treated to remove uh, the gold uh, using uh, sodium or potassium cyanide solution. That cyanide basically causes a reaction with gold and makes it water soluble. That water soluble solution then was transferred over into another container, set of containers that contained zinc and the uh, zinc reacted with the gold cyanide, made zinc cyanide and gold. The gold powder then it was left in a really fine powder and that uh, gold powder was then smelted. The original smelter is that can down there by the assay uh, room. It's about this big round, so it's a very small, right. small thing. A, a 20 cent mill this size could run about 100 tons of ore in a 24 hour period. Um, so I guess, uh, anything else I should tell you? Put the earplugs in. <laughs> <laughs> Not too loud. Yeah. I, I do carry earplugs, but uh, <laughs> Actually, uh, from this side, uh, speaking of this, the, the cams hitting the tappets make the most of noise. The, the motor probably makes the worst. And the uh, inside the stamp mill itself, in the mortar box, the uh, gravel-sized pieces which come out of this are essentially pulverized underwater. So that, that, that end of it doesn't make that much water. Shots? Um, what happens, the, uh, when that two-inch uh, ore comes out of here, goes up there, drops in the feeder, feeds in here, the stamp drops, it pulverizes. Well, when it comes back up with the water table in there, there's a hydraulic action that sucks that back in, so you get it until it gets down to about 100 mace. It comes through that 100 mace skin. And that's where you get the fineness. And it'll keep in there working until, and you feed it accordingly. They used to run this 24/6 back when in its day, so it took a lot of. This this really eats up the ore in a in a little bit of time. So we pick this up by hand out in the desert or around on a claim and bring it in here in barrels on trucks. And uh, we brought in about a ton in uh, April, wasn't it? Yeah. We picked it up in snow, had an inch of snow the night before. <laughs> And we throw our fingers and feet a little bit, and about <laughs> six of us was out there picking it up and brought about a ton back. And this has lasted so far with our demonstration. So we don't run it long unless somebody wants to help and we'll go get some more and we'll bring a <laughs> truckload in here. Be glad to have you and you'll have fun too. So it is very educational in uh, how they did it back years ago. And uh, the only stamp, 20 stamp mill that has anything operational in Arizona. So that is quite a, quite an honor to have it here. So there's a 10 stamp mill up at Cave Creek, which operates. Yeah. All 10 stamps. And there's one at the former mining museum downtown, which used to operate, but it's... They closed the, they closed the mining museum now, Whoa. so the lobbyists could put in a uh, party house, and then they run out of money, and uh, they're still trying to get it into operation so any help that you could do to further that happening we used to we've got a uh, Arizona prospectors would have their meetings in there uh, there's also had lapidary in there rock hounds that sort of thing and it was very educational that's the heart of Arizona and they just throwed it out and all the stuff that was in there was dispersed whether it was lost crashed what have you it's a shame one of the largest collections of copper and gold ores in the country was also housed in that museum. Oh, this thing that I'm holding here, I'm supposed to hold on to this to remind me to tell you what it is. <laughs> uh, 
All right, in order to get the stamp to operate, when this thing ran on steam and now with the engine, um, we couldn't lift all five stamps, or in some cases, 10 stamps at a, with, with just the motors going. So the idea was that all the stamps are jacked up. They're sitting on top of a, uh, essentially a wooden, a wooden leg. Wooden leg. And so the tappet sits on top of that. The tappet is the, the big brown bulge up there at the top that's connected that each uh, stamp has at the top of it. So that tappet is lifted by the can when it comes around. So in order to get this thing to run, we let it run freewheel first, get it up to speed. Then we have to remove the jack leg from each uh, of the, uh, the tappets. The way that is done is that the cam comes around at uh, 52 RPM, so that's 100 times you're basically coming around and um, you're, you're going to drop the stamp 100 times a minute. So when that uh, cam comes around, you set this on top of the cam as it comes up, and that creates a space so that this between the cam and the tappet lifts the tappet and the stamp up so you can pull the jack leg out. And if you're lucky, it doesn't throw it in the crowd, which is why we, uh, we don't have people standing directly in front of us. Uh, we, we've changed the materials. This is a, a plastic now. The original rubber ones actually did end up in the crowd back in December. So now we have a, a new material. Usually it kicks it back at us, but the idea is that we shouldn't have people out there. We've got a four-cylinder Wisconsin engine here. It was a military style. Uh, it came, the Chrysler in the uh, engine came from uh, Jerome, uh, Arizona up there. We did some trading with them and got it here, and the volunteers set this up through the heat of the summer to get it going. And we would, anybody knows of a clutch for a four-cylinder Wisconsin engine, we would really appreciate finding the cl a clutch for it. Uh, you could contact the website, uh, ask for either Jim or Roger, and we could get you the dimensions, what it takes to expect to mate it up with this, so we don't run it, run it hot, so to speak. It's, when it when we fire the engine, the crusher fires too, which isn't too much, but it'd be nice to have a clutch similar to this, only be a little bigger. So thank you much for coming. Yeah. At this point, we're going to stop talking. That muffler isn't very powerful, and this muffler doesn't exist. And we'll be around for questions afterwards. And if anyone wants any more detail, you can talk to one of us. <laughs> Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. Cough too if you were sick.
you're welcome to uh, come up here and look at it, what we took out of here. Ask uh, any of the volunteers here, they can tell you some sort of story about it or answer your questions. If they can't, we'll find who does who knows. <laughs> Yeah, if you ask me, I'll probably tell you more than you want to know. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no. uh, I guess it's a lot easier to chew a big thing. <laughs> 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 <